Akamanto is an atmospheric survival horror game and I enjoyed finding both endings, but I have also found a few things that are hidden from a player and I want to show them to you now. If you haven't seen me play the game yet, this video will spoil a lot about the game. You might want to watch my first video first. There are designer notes hidden throughout the levels. Simple things like crowbar here, something that might be a note for later, or just a way to find your way around the level as you build it easier. Locked from other side is on this door for example. And indeed you have to go on the other side, go down the stairs and open it from here to actually open this. Over here we just have three fan switches, only one can be turned off at a time, needs wire to power switches, basically hints for the little puzzle here. These things, these notes can be used as a walkthrough, basically. Bad spirit is blocking the door, locked, requires Ofuda, which is a talisman you can find in the library. This door just says locked, again something you have to open from the other side. Another door that's locked, another door that's locked. And actually these doors are not locked. I don't know what that is about. Maybe there was a quest planned here, which was not actually put into place. Again, locked from the other side. Crowbar needed to get through here. Some notes for the fans. Stop the fan, turn off the switch. Same here. And here, fan 0 2 is fan 0 3. Okay, and now it's getting interesting. We have knock, knock again to open. And then there's acid here. Use bucket and pump gets bucket with acid and a coin. And use bucket with acid here to unlock. And the pump note is there, right here. That's just a note where to find the eyes. That's just a note where to find the seeds. That's just a note explaining how this puzzle works. You have to find six missing parts for this body to get a rope. And then this just indicates where you can find one of the parts. Kind of useful when you fly around the level in the level editor to try to find things again. You just go through the notes. Brain, nose, rib cage. And then there's some explanation which is actually really interesting. A student fell from the rooftop because she couldn't handle being locked and the starvation. Use rope ending A escaped. So this provides some information that you can't confirm otherwise. A student fell from the rooftop because she couldn't handle being locked and the starvation. So she fell because she wanted to be free. Maybe she was fleeing as well and she was starving. That explains also why she asks for food in this quest. She is basically a ghost of her former self. Well, I think the suicide theory, which probably many had because you see the shoes here. These shoes are not really cleanly put here. So I think she didn't try to commit. I think it's just what happened. I think she just wanted to be free, but she didn't want to die. Why would she? And here's a little more. A student who fell from the rooftop standing in front requires bread and milk to open the door. So this just confirms that this is in fact the person or rather the ghost of a person that fell from the rooftop here. And you can find all well, this kind of sign info in these developer notes. Unfortunately, we don't get any additional information for the well lady. Well will tell you how to defeat AK. Requires a coin. And then we just have notes which say where paper can be found. Orange paper, purple paper, some more info about the wire stuff, fan switch cable, fishing rod, which is actually not here. That's really interesting. The fishing rod is not here where the note says it is, which is very close to the pool. In fact, the fishing rod instead is in the kitchen. The developers did not see it necessary to annotate these changes. The fishing rod is actually here in the kitchen. They didn't update all these notes. Use fishing rod, get yellow paper. That's another note. Use watering can, get water. Another note. Use seed pack, use watering can with water to get a coin. Shrine, put all seven papers ending B. So ending A is actually the fleeing ending. Now it gets interesting here. Here's actually three lines about this machine. I personally was confused by the first coin producing a bandage, which is a usable item. I really wanted something else. We'll talk about this later. Just a coin. And uh, what do we have here? Drawer, also a coin. Violet paper, green paper. Drawer with the Ofuda, which is over here. We need that to get into the shrine room. Watering can, just hanging out here. Now let's talk about some more things. Specifically, there is this machine. I don't need to use this right now. This is a food stamp machine. And it's not interactive. Food ticket machine, if you click on it, that's what it says. It seems that this was supposed to be used to feed the girl initially, but somehow the quest or puzzle was combined away from this machine and back to this machine, even though maybe perhaps this was just planned as a thing where you can get health. 
and the bolt cutters are here as well. What I actually think is that you would have to get the bolt cutters to unlock this machine. It would have chains in front of it and they haven't decided where to put the bolt cutter yet, but then they decided against it for some reason. That's my theory. The bolt cutters are in the game, they are hidden, and this machine over here is in the game. It's not even hidden, so clearly they were planned for something, but well, that didn't happen, which is, it's normal. Game development, that's what happens. Now, please understand, there are planks around and this is just a theory, but my theory is that these planks were planned to be used for some kind of quest or puzzle rather, but that didn't happen. And maybe I'm just completely wrong. Maybe they're just really decorative, but it makes no sense at all that they actually are here. Perhaps the plan was to have some kind of uh, platforming puzzle where you would have to move or crouch on top of these shelves for some reason. Please be aware that this is pure speculation. Another pure speculation is that initially it was planned to have red and blue paper available here, and that depending on the player's choice, the enemy would behave differently. If red, then they would try to slice you. If blue, they would try to strangle you and drain blood from your body. Well, again, just another theory of mine, but here's the thing I want you to see that is also hidden in the game. This guy. This is the player. Now, the game confirms that the player is a female, and this looks quite male to me, but this is indeed the player character if it were activated and visible. But fact of the matter is that this is not visible, it is invisible, always on all maps, so the player is never supposed to see that. But if the game was in third person mode and uh, they just left the character as it was, then that's how the player would look like. You know, that's just some trash that was not removed because there was no necessity to remove it. You could just disable it and it was solved. Nobody ever saw this before, so that's fine. That is all for all the secrets and background information and developer commentary I could find in the game so far. I'm thinking of making another video about this game, but also planning to play the other games by the same developer. So stay tuned for that. Subscribe if you haven't yet. If you have a preference which of the other games I play first, let me know in the comments. And apart from that, I will see you in the next video. Until then, ciao!